Hey guys, Rollout here, and welcome back to Builder's Block for another week. Right out of the gate, I want to address anyone wondering where the Transformers videos are at. Don't worry, I'm currently working on videos for Breakthrough, and those should start going up this week. Then I'll move on to videos for Trowel right after. Juggling Builder's Block and my main content at the same time is a little bit of a challenge, but it's certainly doable, so stay tuned and look forward to those. Anyway, the convention last week taught me the importance of rest, because I would usually record these episodes on Monday and upload them on Tuesday while building a new creation every day. I was so tired last Monday that I sorely needed a break, and so now things are a little different. Going forward, I'm going to skip my daily creation on Tuesdays and just work on uploading the episode in its place. Doing it this way will just give me one less thing to worry about. If you want to keep up with my daily creations as soon as they're built, you can consider supporting Builder's Block on Patreon, but simply just liking the video and sharing it around helps me out as well, so thank you very much for that. Now, on with the show. As it happens, there is construction across the street as I record this. So if you hear any beeps and booms and various trucks whirring in the background, uh, that is probably why. Anyway, fresh out of Bricks Cascade, I found the pieces that I needed to finish Garudan. So I found the orange wings and the red binoculars, and here he is. I think he looks awesome. He's a lot more solid from the back as well. I switched up the color blocking a little bit back here. I made the thruster more substantial, and I solidified his coattails. I think they look a lot better. They're still dynamic and articulate, but they're a lot more solid. Here he is with the older Garu Dan, and they are quite similar in a lot of ways, especially now that the new one is color coordinated. A lot of people asked me why I didn't give the new one a cape like the old one, uh, and to my knowledge, that was never the intention. It was always meant to be a coat. It's now just more visually apparent, I think. The old version had this capability where you could switch out the fur on his coat into different colors to give him different elemental attributes. And the same is still possible on the new version with the added benefit that you can remove these wing elements without removing his head. So that is pretty cool. But at this rate, I am less interested in doing that. Uh, these wing pieces come in white for ice powers. They come in sand blue for water powers. I could do it if I wanted to, but I'm never going to display him that way. And on top of that, his name is Garudan. He's based off of Garuda, which is a fire bird. I feel like him just having fire powers is good enough. Having him switch elements is an option, I suppose, but uh, right now, I, I feel like this is good enough. So if you watched the last episode, you will see that I bring two of each of my Transformers to Bricks Cascade, to conventions. I also have them displayed that way on my shelves, and it generally just makes my life a whole lot easier when it comes to video production. Uh, it means that for comparisons in videos, I have two of each, so I don't have to transform them back and forth, I have a robot and a vehicle ready to go. Uh, when it comes to making instructions, it makes my life easier as well, because if I've built a second one before I make those instructions, I can have a reference model and a model that I can disassemble for the video. So I generally make two of each of my transformers. I build at such a small scale that this is easily doable, so why not? 
So let's talk about my process of duplication because I am ready now to build a second barricade. Now when it comes to barricade or something like barricade, I think it's a, a little bit easier. His color scheme is mostly black and that's something I have a lot of. Uh, it's very plentiful. These pieces are easier to come by. So I was able to build a second one of him pretty easily with one exception. Uh, and that is the trans dark blue one by one tile on his light bar, which I only own a single one of, uh, strangely enough. It's kind of an odd piece. Uh, it has not been produced since 2005, believe it or not. It's only been in something like 28 sets, I want to say. But the strange thing is that in one of those sets it came in, it was produced in hundreds. There was like 200 pieces in one set. Uh, so it's hard to find, but also in no short supply on Bricklink. So even though it's kind of rare, it's also pretty cheap. Uh, it, it's a strange piece, but... The point is, I only have one of them, and I need another to finish this barricade. That's the only part I need to bricklink for this guy. However, after Brick's Cascade, I wanted to finally build a second Devastator. I had all the parts I needed to duplicate Mixmaster and Overload, but the rest of them are in uh, various degrees of disrepair. Now, when I don't have the parts uh, to make a duplicate for a, a Transformer, all the pieces that I need, I replace with uh, generic colors like white and black and gray, things like that. Most of the replacement parts I need uh, for this model are in white, as you can see here um, and then that makes it easy for me to create a wanted list on bricklink and and order those pieces or just have a reference so i know what to look for the next time i go to bricks and minifigs things like that but i have a second model uh physically completed uh for reference at the very least now while we have devastator here there is something that I really, really want to talk about, and that is the whole Rampage and Skipjack debacle. Can we, can we stop, please? Can, can everyone just chill out? Studio Series only made things worse, because Rampage and Skipjack are the new Frenzy and Rumble. Everyone is is correcting everyone on which one is which, and I feel like I need to explain that my rampage is yellow, and that's okay, all right? So, in the movie, in Revenge of the Fallen, there are various sets of Constructicons running around. There is... A red transformer that hops around, and in the subtitles of the movie, they call him Rampage. In the credits of the movie, they call him Skipjack. So the red one is both Rampage and Skipjack. Then, all of the toys in 2009 just had the yellow guy hopping around, the yellow guy forming part of Devastator, and his name was Rampage. Then, Takara decided that they wanted to make the red Transformer, and so they made the Deluxe class in red, they called him Rampage, they made a Legends class in yellow and called it Skipjack, that's the first time we had a toy called Skipjack, and now Studio Series have doubled down and the red one is Rampage, the yellow one is Skipjack, but that's not how it always was, okay? Now my model is based on the toys from 2009, where Rampage was absolutely yellow, and that's the way it was, and that's not incorrect. That's just how it is on this version. So can we stop, please? Can, can we stop with the comments about how it's Rampage, or it's Skipjack, or it's yellow, or it's red? It doesn't matter. Revenge of the Fallen is a confusing mess. Nobody is right. So stop correcting everyone. 
With that off my chest, uh, let's move on, <laughs> okay? So somebody mentioned in the comments of a previous builder's block that um, over the course of builder's block, I haven't built a whole lot of spaceships. So uh, yeah, I thought that was weird and uh, I wanted to build a spaceship. So here you go, here's a little micro spaceship. I think uh, this is a pretty neat design. I wanted to use dark blue, a color I don't use uh, too, too much. And uh, yeah, of course it transforms just slightly. I, I like things that have uh, alternate modes, of course. It's, it's what I do. But it's got um, some wings that rotate. I guess it's a little bit of a VTOL with the thrusters on the bottom of the wings here. Um, it shifts into kind of this landing mode where the wings open up to form supports. The guns fold in and the thrusters fold around on the back uh, to give it support back there. Uh, so yeah, kind of a conversion. Not really what I would consider a transformer though. It does have an interesting technique with the cockpit. It uses this uh, thin U-clip here that can fit inside this old control panel piece. Um, and I thought that was sort of neat. On the next day, I wanted to continue with the whole spaceship thing, uh, but what I ended up building, I wouldn't quite consider a spaceship. I imagine this as kind of a land skiff or uh, some kind of a desert hover vehicle. It has these support on the side here, these supports on the side here. Sorry, that rampage thing just it got me heated, got my words all mixed up. Anyway... It uses this like lifeguard raft thing on the front there, some interesting parts usage. Uh, it has this bucket piece here for this uh, thruster element at the back. And then you have an ice pick for the, I guess you'd call it a ski that I imagine sort of digs through the sand at the bottom. On the next day, again, some kind of futuristic sci-fi vehicle. That's just where my mind was at over the next few days. So, uh, I built this uh, ATV kind of buggy thing. Uh, my main goal is that I wanted a cockpit that could open at micro scale. So, we will go over that in a second, but let's take a look at uh, uh, the overall design here. It has very large wheels, it has this rounded shape, it has some lights at the bottom, some taillights at the back, and then, like I said, uh, that cockpit can open up, and you can see a seat and like a little steering wheel inside there. I was working with what I had, and I think it's pretty good for what it is. Now, of course, just due to the nature of how the wheels attach, I had to give it a hover mode. This is just a, a, a thing that I like to do. Something about the kind of back to the future wheels into thrusters uh, motif uh, really appeals to me. And it was super easy to do with this one. And I think it makes sense. It's an ATV. It's got to, you know, get over hills and whatnot. Uh, so, so it can fly. Why not? On the next day, I wanted to experiment with some one-by-one -one brackets. You can put them together into kind of this like helix spiral shape, and it's really, really cool. You can also fit a rod in the middle of that, which is just a great technique. So I started by building off of that with some headlight bricks, some more brackets, some one-by-ones. Eventually, I had this shape. Uh, and, and that was going to be it. It was just going to be a demonstration of some of the geometry, some of the techniques. Uh, but it looked very much like stone to me, like cobblestone. And so I decided to kind of uh, decorate the edges with this like organic, stony, carved nature. Uh, and then I, I wanted to, to do something more with that uh, central rod connection. So I created uh, this pillar that turned into a uh, fancy ancient looking brassiere of some kind. Uh, so what started out as just an experiment with parts uh, turned into a little vignette and I think it looks rather nice. Very, very clean. Uh, the flame is kind of an interesting technique. Uh, the bottom of this structure is that same sort of helix bracket connection uh, just with some two by two by twos instead of one by twos 
And then these flame elements just kind of uh, nestle together inside there. It's actually pretty solid once you have it together, even though they are just kind of held in by friction a little bit. But it's a really awesome looking technique. I feel if you got these pieces in blue, it would make for some nice like uh, churning water as well. Uh, so there's a lot of potential with this, I feel. On the final day, I got a lot of my orange pieces together, and, and I just wanted to play with a lot of the orange parts that I haven't used in a while. So I built this terrifying magma creature, who looks just a little bit silly. He's got wild eyes and a mouth with a tongue, and he's he's a, an, an ooga booga creature. Um... A little bit silly. Uh, I, I want definitely wanted to make use of uh, these like orange leaf elements I have. For some reason, I am just fascinated with this fire element. I put it in so many things at the moment. It's in all of the recent synchro frames I've been building. Uh, that brazier from before. This guy. I, I just I really like this fire element uh, as of late. But uh, yeah, he's got some cool claws. There's a lot of clip abuse on this guy um the way his arms attach the way his head attaches the way his jaw attaches uh, it's all clips used in ways they probably uh, shouldn't be used in but it turns out i have a lot of clips in orange but not a whole lot of things to legally clip them to so uh I had to get a little bit creative, I guess. And another thing, scrap metal wasn't even part of Devastator in Revenge of the Fallen, and that smaller dump truck and bulldozer that just show up, they don't even have official names, so let's not even get into that. Everything was so much easier when the Constructicons that formed Devastator and the Constructicons that turn into robots were entirely separate. But now they've confused things even more. Anyone can be Devastator. Who cares, right? <sighs> okay. I think I'm done. Special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my awesome leader class patrons, Cruciferous Belligerents, Toa Ventron, and Val Raven. Until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off. Okay, look, I didn't forget Scrap Metal, or any of the other smaller, insignificant Constructicons. Is it not clear that my model is based on the Supreme Class and Legends Class toys from 2009? And no, I'm not giving him Wrecking Balls. I refuse. Do we not have standards? A line must be drawn somewhere.